Welcome to episode number 234 of Truth Telling with Elizabeth D'Alto. I am obviously your host, Elizabeth D'Alto, and this is Sunday Sermon number 27. If you're new to the podcast or this is your first Sunday Sermon, these are shorter solo episodes, just 10 to 20 minutes, that go a little bit deeper and can be a little more esoteric than our regular interviews. During Sunday Sermons, I do things like oracle readings, share my favorite prayers, poems, or excerpts from what I'm reading or studying right now. These are like wild and untamed gospel, heart ponderings, and delicious morsels of wisdom filled with creative and inspiring ideas, thoughts, and ruminations to spark the truth, power, wisdom, and love that lives within you. All belief systems are welcomed here on the show. My truth, ponderings, experiences, and curiosities are simply that, my own. So no matter what your faith is, may you get exactly what you need from listening to this, And may you remember always that everything you've ever needed has always been inside of you. You are made from love, you are love, and you are loved. So today's Sunday sermon is based around an experience I had earlier this week. If you're on Instagram and you ever watch my stories, you know I go to the beach most mornings out of the week. It's where and how I connect and make time to attune myself to nature, who for me, and I really believe for all who are willing to pay close attention, is my greatest teacher. She is masterful at using what she has. She doesn't take more than she needs. She's extremely mysterious, but always reveals exactly what you need to know in a way you can receive and understand it. I get a lot out of time in nature, especially by the ocean, and especially lately in Point Doom here in Malibu. So the following is an excerpt from my journal the other morning, edited just a little bit to make sense to people other than me. Those of you who journal can relate to that, right? Like if someone else were to read your journal, they'd be like, what are you talking about? So I had climbed out to the absolute edge of Point Doom, essentially like the highest point and the farthest cliff. And it felt unfamiliar. I'm not sure I'd ever actually walked out on that cliff before, but I can't imagine that I hadn't. So either way, I got comfortable, I sat down, I meditated for a little while. And then I laid down on the rocks, and here's what I wrote. I'm laying on the edge of Point Doom. If I rolled over to the right, I'd probably die, like literally plummet to my death. I notice a distinct difference in how I feel on each side of my body. In the left side, facing the rocks, I feel steady, safe, and grounded. On the right side, opening up into the expanse of the ocean, as well as the cliff, I feel anxious and afraid, but also curious. The curiosity of invincibility. What would really happen if I jumped off this cliff? Part of me imagines I could just gracefully dive into the ocean like Diana does in Wonder Woman. My rational brain knows that's not the case, and I have no actual desire to jump off this cliff. And the fear of the actual expansion into the ocean beyond the horizon is super interesting too. What a metaphor. What's actually out there? I can't see it, so can I possibly trust it? We trust what we can see and verify the root of. Note to self, I need to look up the root of the word verify. I'm pretty sure it means truth. But we can only see what we have the consciousness to see. We're limited in our consciousness, so we're limited in our trust. At some point, we've got to test what we can't see or verify or we'll never grow. And it's not about being more or not enough. We're actually so much. Not to be confused with too much, but so much, so amazing, so full of potential. And most of us are really only tapping into a very small fraction of our potential when we don't trust the invitation of expansion. So that's what I wrote. And then I had my roomie deck with me and I decided to pull a card. And what I asked the deck was I said, I knew at that point, I'm like, great, this will be perfect for the Sunday sermon. I love this metaphor. So I asked the Rumi deck to guide us into whatever expansion is upon us. And I pulled card number 37, which is called Sacred Soul Sister. And I'm not going to read you the whole thing because it's like four pages long in the guidebook, but I'm going to read you uh, the poem and the first two paragraphs. So here's the poem. When you are conscious, a cloud of sadness surrounds you. When you are beyond consciousness, the moon rests in your arms. When you are conscious, the beloved moves out of your reach. When you are beyond consciousness, the ecstasy of love moves you away. When you are conscious, you are depressed like fall. When you are beyond consciousness, the winter cold feels like spring. All your wavering is due to your longing to be stable. 
Look for instability until you become stable. And then here's the card message. I love you. I am your other self. I am with you always, your partner on this soul journey. I am the you that you do not see. I am the you that speaks through intuition and instinct. I whisper and sing and shout my crazed truth-telling to you. Through your dreams, through your body, I am the you that is wise, that trusts in life, that knows. I am the you that sees reality rather than appearance. I am that you. I am the you that knows how to be happy and free. There is a valid point of view that we travel this path of our life journey alone. Our deepest descents into the psyche happen alone. We meet death alone and come into the world alone. And yet, there is a vaster perspective that we are never alone. That would be impossible to really be alone. We're connected to all of life, and there is no such thing as being alone in reality, only in limited and temporary perception. So I totally love that. It felt super perfect, especially that the poem was about consciousness, and that's what I had just been writing about. And they even used the term trust and truth-telling, which were also, obviously, all up in the podcast all the time. So I gathered myself together. I got up to leave. And on my way out, I realized I hadn't seen any dolphins, whales, or seals, which again, if you follow my Insta stories, you know that I see dolphins all the time, but lately I've been seeing some seals and whales as well. What I did notice that morning was I saw a lot of pelicans, and the pelicans fly low to the water, which made me think that they're in the expanse, right? Like they're in the expanse of the ocean. They're out there. They're in it in that space that I was contemplating being terrified of diving into right? And that expanse is symbolic of any expansion in our lives that we're afraid to go into or lean into or even move towards. But the pelicans flying low to the water made me think that they navigate the expanse from the optimal place for them. So how can we each navigate the expanse that's inviting us from the optimal place for us? So good questions to think of going into the week. I would love to hear from you on social media, what you think about this and what this brings up to you. So find me on Instagram or find me on Facebook. Um, Leave a comment on the post. I don't necessarily respond to private messages. So if you send me one there, I might see it, but I won't necessarily respond. But if you leave it on the post, I will respond. So head on over if you want the show notes to untameyourself.com forward slash T as in truth, T as in telling dash Two three four. That's untameyourself.com forward slash tt-234. And I announced this past week on the podcast, upcoming in March, I am releasing a tool called the Trust Assessment. You'll be able to get a free trust score, um, some ideas on how your trust score can be impacting your life and what to do about it. I'm really, really excited about this because at the root of everything I've been doing for many, many years now, um, so many things come back to trust, right? Trust is a root problem for a lot of people. It's actually the number one problem people don't know they have. A lot of people are naming their problems as like the symptoms, the surface level things that are going on without realizing that so much of what's uncomfortable or where they're suffering lies or where they're struggling their life is a symptom of not trusting themselves. So the trust assessment is going to really help out with that. And we have some subsequent trainings that are going to be amazing too throughout the course of 2018. So you can get on the wait list to find out when that's available and be one of the first people to take it at wildsoulmovement.com forward slash trust dash wait list. All right, y'all have an amazing week.